man. You know, I was like to take this opportunity to talk about myself. The man of the hour. And let me tell you something, Daddy. When you're the man, you make history every time you step foot in this ring. And that's the bottom line. Wrestling Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 96 of the Top Sweet Wrestling Podcast. We're about to hop right on into it. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got a lot to talk about. Uh, in particular, the wedding of Bobby Lashley and Lana, the comedy layout that I got here. Look, we're about to hop into every bit of it. The elite, they have to be elite. Uh, Tani Hashi versus Chris Jericho. Eight, what a future AEW title shop. you on the line. We got some, some things to hop into. But first, you can find me at linktr.ee slash 2 sweet pod. That's where all my listings are for this podcast. Also on Twitter, at 2 sweet pod, the number 2 sweet pod, and at omg Corey B. So, first up, ladies and gentlemen, we're just going to hop right on into this crazy wedding of Bobby Lashley and Lana. The wedding that never was, that never ended, and man, just like, I just took through my state of mind while this stuff was going on before it happened. Like, I posted a gif that said, like, this, this is just the worst day of my life. So we're going to sit through this wedding. This is the main event segment. So... The first thing we see is the minister. The dude looks like Bill Belichick. So we, we just going to call him Bill Belichick for short. Minister Bill Belichick comes out. He, he's uh, announcing the proceedings. And then, you know, I'm just sitting there thinking, okay, this is going to be boring if it's Rusev to come out and break up the wedding. Because, you know, in, in every wrestling wedding, you got to have somebody to come out and break it up. And I'm like, eh, it's going to be boring if it's just Rusev. And boy, did I not know what I was getting myself into. So... He introduces Lashley, and Lashley comes out, the groom comes out to his theme music. How about that? He's, Lashley's going out to his theme music. And the first thing I see, like, there are no guests at the wedding. Like, I mean, come on, man. There are just a bunch of chairs. Why did they even have the chairs for? There was just a bunch of chairs there with no guests. So, I look up, Lashley comes out, and I'm like, bro, does he have on drawn on eyebrows? What is going on with Lashley here? So, we come and we get into the ring. It's Lana and Lashley in the ring. We take a commercial break in the middle of the wedding. And I'm just sitting there like, when was the last time? Okay, yeah, I, I remember the last wedding I went to. Boy, it was so, the, 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 the drama was so high that we had to take a commercial break in the middle of the wedding. Come on, man. At least stick with the wedding the whole time through. But moving on to the actual proceedings, we had a lot of stuff happen here. Everything from ah, Lana not wanting kids to Lana spilling the We had Rusev Day chance. Then Lana broke out into spilling their name because Lana won the fifth grade spelling bee in elementary school. So, I mean, what is she doing there? But to the point, ladies and gentlemen, we had some interruptions here. And the first of which was a guy that came down who looks like the twin of Kip Sabian from AEW. But from for WWE purposes, we just go call him Ty Pettengill. Ty Pettengill came down, talked about how he was the first husband of Lana's uh, before Rusev, and he got a press slam for his troubles. Then, we had the sister come down and had her playing a stereotypical angry black woman role, which, which I didn't like, but we just go call her Nisha for short. So Nisha came down, she talked about how she was the first wife of Bobby Lashley, and I gotta say, this is pretty funny because it got some Jerry, Jerry <laughs> chants. And it was a show of Jerry Springer, for goodness sakes. But she got slapped off the apron for her troubles. And look, everything, if you look at my timeline, this was a harmless wedding. It was stupid, it was dumb, but it was nothing that truly offended me. Nothing that truly got me mad. I was really joking around about everything until Liv Morgan came out. And as soon as she came out, I'm like, is that Liv Morgan? And I'm like, of course it's Liv Morgan. So I, I didn't even want to believe it at first. So I went and I went to Twitter and everybody's like, Liv Morgan, Liv Morgan, Liv Morgan. I'm like, okay, it's her. So we have this cooked up thing to where Liv Morgan talked about how she was Lana's love. And like, she's upset that she's getting married to Lashley. And then we have a big old fight between Liv and Lana and Lashley meanwhile Lashley is just in the background looking like oh I can't break up no girl fight so he's just trying to think about man how can I get them both that's what he's thinking about so 
all of this is going on and of course the wedding ends with Rusev tearing up everything Rusev and Liv stands tall and I gotta say I was ready to actually praise this wedding to, if, I, if I'm being totally honest with y'all but Liv Morgan came out and like we've had all of this build up for Liv Morgan all of this build to where to what she was gonna do and we, we, she had all of this time off and we had all of these expectations and like I hear like a lot of people are, would tell me or a lot of people are saying you know let's let it play out and you know what I had to I know I got talked down from the ledge to where I was saying you know okay I'll let it play out but they had so many options you could have debuted Lil Morgan at the Royal Rumble or uh, a fan theory that kept running around you could have debuted Liv Morgan with Bray Wyatt or you could have done something very big at the very least to set her apart from the rest of the roster as it stands right now you debut Liv Morgan into what is my opinion the worst storyline in WWE and now like where is Liv Morgan supposed to go from there like is she just gonna be another player in the storyline is this head toward a mixed tag match like I don't see big things for Liv Morgan coming out of this storyline whereas if you would have debuted her like in the Royal Rumble and who knows have her win the whole darn thing that would have been a huge deal but that's just my point aside that could have done a whole lot better for Liv Morgan that really upset me like at the right at the end I put out a tweet or a poll saying is Liv Morgan ruined and the options were yes and yes like I've sort of been talked off that ledge a little bit but I still stand on that point I think she's ruined from the standpoint that she will never meet the expectations that we had for her the huge uh, deals the huge expectations that we I uh, dreamt of when she was out and when they had the debut videos going like we thought that she would be a big deal in the women's division I just don't see that for her I hope I'm wrong about that. I would like nothing more than to see Liv Morgan prosper in the women's division, but I don't have the highest of hopes. I will be tuning in to see how all of this crazy shenanigans plays out with this wedding with Lashley, with Lana, with Rusev, and now with Liv Morgan. So moving on, ladies and gentlemen, we are staying with Monday Night Raw, Randy Orton. And I'm not going to be very long on this, but... Randy Orton, uh, quote unquote, now we know, quote unquote, got hurt at a house show. And they built up this angle to where Randy Orton came out on crutches. Excuse me, he had the big speech. Looks like Randy Orton is going to retire. And AJ Styles interrupts him. And of course, Randy Orton fakes him out. And he hits an RKO and he stands tall. So here's my thing. I never really bought into fact into the fact like I said a lot of people posted man Randy Orton really got us and I never really bought into it for whatever reason like okay it's for me he tried too hard to make it out to be a big sympathetic speech that's just my opinion but at the end of the day here's the deal I think they blew a potentially big storyline with Randy Orton and AJ Styles you could have really played that up a lot more throughout the weeks of Randy Orton being injured and then have him come back and say that he's ready to go he's ready to fight AJ Styles but uh, as for the bigger picture Randy Orton versus AJ Styles potentially at Wrestlemania I'm not really looking forward to that if that's what they stick with I'm not really looking forward to it because we've seen it already and we've seen the story of Randy Orton and AJ Styles before and I really thought that this was an opportunity to get both guys off into doing something else. We'll see how it goes going forward but Randy Orton versus AJ Styles is not something I'm very much particularly interested in. So moving on ladies and gentlemen sticking with Monday Night Raw, Samoa Joe is back ladies and gentlemen how about that? Samoa Joe, Kevin Owens, Kevin Owens got into it with Seth Rollins in the AOP and I don't know where Samoa Joe's music hits and you know I thought that for this Monday Night Raw he was going to be selling the beating that he took on the on last week's Monday Night Raw but Samoa Joe is back and he's back in his wrestling gear ladies and gentlemen and the question I have is who has the most momentum right now is it Samoa Joe or is it Kevin Owens? And I gotta say that that is an incredibly tough uh, question to answer. 
And man, for right now, I'm gonna go with Samoa Joe, believe it or not. Now, Kevin Owens is more established right now. He's been in the ring more. Samoa Joe has been out with that injury. And KO has picked up a little bit of momentum here versus uh, squaring off, excuse me, with uh, Seth Rollins in the AOP. The crowd has been behind him, but it's something about a debut that gets the fans buzzing. Something about a debut that uh, of a person that the fans really love. And Samoa Joe is just downright a person that the fans extremely love, including yours truly. Uh, of this era, he's one of my favorites. And... Samoa Joe coming back, man. I think that immediately upon his return, he is a heavyweight championship uh, player in that discussion uh, to face off with Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania. He has to be one of the top contenders that you look at and you're like, this is a match that I would want to see at WrestleMania. That is my opinion. So it's my opinion that Samoa Joe has more momentum as we head into the road to WrestleMania. Our KO is just fine as well. Kevin Owens versus Brock Lesnar is another match that I would love to see. But obviously first we got to settle what's going on with Joe KO Seth Rollins and the AOP. So I'm looking forward to seeing how the storyline plays out uh, as it stands right now. Samoa Joe to me has more momentum and I'm very interested to see how that plays going into the Royal Rumble. These are two guys that should be toward the top of the list of guys that you would like to see win the Royal Rumble going forward. So I'm very interested in those guys. We're going to move on here. We're going to move on to Hiroshi Tanahashi versus Chris Jericho at Wrestle Kingdom, ladies and gentlemen. How about this? So, Jericho, Tanahashi said, excuse me, that he wanted a shot at the AEW Championship uh, if he defeated Chris Jericho at Wrestle Kingdom. And next thing you know, the stipulation is on. If Tanahashi wins, he will get an AEW title shot. And this got a lot of people buzzing, ladies and gentlemen. And a lot of people excited, myself included. You know, the first thing a lot of people said was, okay, this is the partnership uh, with AEW and New Japan Pro Wrestling that we've been waiting on. And a lot of people are buzzing, a lot of people are excited. I think it's going to be a fantastic match. Well, I don't think. I know it's going to be a fantastic match at Wrestle Kingdom. But here's the skinny, here's the deal. I, I think that this is all, this is my personal opinion. This is all for show. Now, we've had all of these rumors that New Japan wanted nothing to do with AEW. Uh, AEW tried to get a working relationship going with them. New Japan wasn't having it. And now, all of a sudden, they want in. Like, to me, in my opinion, once again, I hope I'm wrong about this one. But, in my opinion, I think that this is all for show to drum up some interest into Wrestle Kingdom. Not that it needs uh, interest to be drummed up too because Wrestle Kingdom is going to be a fantastic show but I think that New Japan is just using AEW's momentum here to get some viewers, casual viewers to Wrestle Kingdom and to New Japan Pro Wrestling World that's just my opinion I don't think a relationship is going to go down here in my estimation Chris Jericho is going to win this match that's just my opinion on these things and uh, it's a total win for both companies if if I'm wrong about it, but it's a total win for both companies if Chris Jericho wins as well. A, a New Japan Pro Wrestling gets the eyes on their product, and AEW's World Champion gets the win at New Japan uh, Wrestle Kingdom. Excuse me. So it's a win-win for both companies if Tanahashi wins. Uh, it will be a big deal. I don't know how many casual viewers that AEW could draw with a Jericho Tanahashi match. We're talking about uh, in the States. I don't know how many people are privy to Hiroshi Tanahashi. I wouldn't say the vast majority are privy to him in New Japan Pro Wrestling. However, uh, put it, let, there is nothing wrong with putting on good wrestling. So if you were to have... Chris Jericho versus Tanahashi on AEW programming, that would be a huge win and a tremendous match at the end of the day, and 
it would be another win-win for New Japan Pro Wrestling to get one of their guys on American television and to get him out to a broader audience and to have a fantastic another fantastic match with Chris Jericho. It's just my opinion. It is just my opinion that this is all a ruse and Chris Jericho wins at Wrestle Kingdom. So moving on to the final topic before we get into the breakdown of AEW. Ah, the elite. The elite the elite so here's my deal man they picked up a victory on AEW we'll get into that later but I was thinking about this all week and look man for AEW the elite can't be mediocre the elite can't be good the elite have to be elite so I look at in particular talking about, I'm talking about the Young Bucks and Omega and I gotta say that during the AEW runs particularly Omega the run so far hasn't been all that great and there's a reason behind that and I see a lot of people tweet all the time man if WWE used Kenny Omega like this what would people be saying so here's my deal man when the Young Bucks got the book as bookers of AEW, the first thing I said was, okay, yeah, I like it because they don't seem like the guys that would just uh, put the titles on themselves without, with reckless abandon and not care about what anybody thinks. But there's been a drawback to that. Uh, they are not those type of guys, but they've gone all the way into, at times, Debooking themselves as you know, we're just a regular tag team, and Kenny Omega is just a regular wrestler. You know, they don't want to have the perception that they're booking themselves and they're booking their, their friends to get over, and it has actually hurt Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks to a lesser extent. Kenny Omega was one of the hottest free agents, well, was the hottest free agent at the time when he was on the market. Ah, uh, but he's come to AEW and the run, like I said, hasn't been great. Here's the deal. You have to be you have to book Kenny Omega into being great. And he, which means he's just gonna have to pick up a lot of wins. Like they, they are gonna look it's it's darned if you do, darned if you don't. Uh so they're gonna have to live with darned if you do. Kenny Omega is gonna have to get a lot of wins. And it hasn't been a bad run by any stretch of the imagination in AEW, but the elite are going to have to be elite. The Young Bucks, at some point, they're going to have to book themselves to be tag team champions. Doesn't have to be right now. Doesn't have to be an extremely long Triple H streak with the titles, but they're going to have to book themselves to be champions because they are the best tag team of this decade in my estimation that's just my opinion they're gonna have to treat themselves as such they're gonna have to treat Kenny Omega as such going forward so the elite are gonna have to be elite going forward that's just my opinion I hope that they you know what go down that road I hope that they are elite we'll see how it all turns out going forward so speaking of AEW we're gonna get into the AEW breakdown that we get into every week so, no NXT this week, so I'm not going to break that down. They had some year-end awards, and we're going to stick with AEW tonight, or today, excuse me. So, first up, uh, before the show even started, I tweeted that, look, AEW, you, you got to bring it tonight. You, you got to bring it. NXT has a year-end awards show. And you have your show, main show going tonight. So you got to bring the heat. And you know what? AEW did bring the heat. I'm proud to say that. They had a fantastic show last night. Started off with Cody versus Darby Allen. And I got to say that the addition of Taz on commentary was tremendous. I, I would love to see him stay full time, but that means somebody has to go. Maybe Tony Schiavone might be up out of there. I don't know. We'll see. But I'd love to see our Taz on there full time. We had Cody versus Darby Allen to start off. It was a high-paced match to start off. The crowd I was obviously into both guys. Uh, we had the Enforcer Double A on Anderson. He's the head coach for Cody, and I got to say that to that standpoint. I like it, but I would much rather Owen Anderson be paired with someone who can't talk. 
Cody Rhodes has come a long way, and he's a tremendous at a promo. He doesn't really need somebody to talk for him, but uh, I'm with the on and pairing for the most part. I just wish that it was with somebody else, but Cody versus Darby Allen was a fantastic match. Uh, a lot of near falls. We had Orn Anderson get up on the apron at the end of the match. Didn't get involved, but gave Cody the heads up that the coffin drop was coming and Cody would go on to pick up the victory. That was a fantastic way to open the show and we rolled right on to the four-way women's matchup for the title and this was probably the best women's matchup in all of AEW. I don't think I'm going out on a limb when I say that. This was a fantastic matchup like it started very fast that is something i really like uh to which we haven't seen a lot from from the women's match they don't start really fast to kind of build their way up into the drama but this one started fast we had a brawl to start uh, we had Sheeta's kendo stick to uh well Sheeta with her kendo stick get involved excuse me and we had nyla just ramsack poor rio and we were off uh, to the races right then and there. This was a fantastic spot, a uh, fantastic match, excuse me. Uh, the spot of the match was Nyla and Sheeta. Like, Nyla just crushed poor Sheeta through the table. And this was, there was a lot of back and forth, near falls, multiple kickouts, and it got to a point to where I thought, okay, they're gonna put the title on Britt Baker here. And I thought Britt Baker was gonna pick it up for the win, but as it would turn out, Rio would come in and get the victory. I did not see that result coming, I must admit. But I'm okay with it. Rio retains the title. Ah, uh, and she will face off with Chris Statlander next week, if I'm not mistaken, for the championship. I am very much hoping that they put the title on Chris Statlander. But we'll see about that next week. As for what happened after the match, Nyla put Rio through the table and We'll see what they do with Nyla. I thought that somebody would come out and make the save. Nobody did. But we'll see what they do with the Nyla going forward. And, oh, man, that was a very good women's matchup that I very much enjoyed. Rio retains the championship. So, moving on, we had John Moxley versus Trent Beretta. Uh, the crowd was very much into John Moxley. His entrance and his entrance music is something to behold because he's comes through the crowd much like he did with the shield and i really like that and the crowd was just lit for this matchup and we had a lot of cool spots here ah the chops that went back and forth with moxley and trent orange cassidy coming into the ring putting his hands in his pockets and then ah uh, moxley mocking him well by putting his hands into his pockets that was a great spot that the crowd loved obviously toward the end of the match we had the paradigm shift on the ramp, which is a sick paradigm shift on the ramp, on the elevated ramp, to which I love that elevated ramp. But at the end of the day, Moxley picks up the victory, had the paradigm shift in the ring for the one, two, three. He gets the win there. And before he can have time to celebrate, we had Sammy Guevara come down. He cut a promo and the inner circle wants John Moxley to join them. And we had Jericho on the big screen offering him a half of the inner circle. He wants to lead, he wants John Moxley to lead them with Chris Jericho. And he offered him a Ford GT as well. And John Moxley said, you know what? I need a week to think about this. <laughs> what you need a week for? You got half of the inner circle and you got a Ford GT? Man, sh you better take that GT. That's, hey, that's just me. I wouldn't need a week to think about it. I'm in. John Moxley is a bigger man than me than, than if he, he doesn't join. Hey, I would have took the deal. That's just me. But moving on, we had Dustin Rhodes versus Sammy Guevara. Crowd was very much into this win. Our spot of the match was the Canadian Destroyer. Old man Dustin Rhodes still doing a Canadian Destroyer on the apron. That looked sick, man. Uh, the first thing I tweeted was, okay, Sammy Guevara is dead. That's just my opinion on the thing. They just had a Canadian Destroyer on the apron. Sixth spot. I like the match, but I did not like the ending. Uh, Jake Hager gets involved in the match. We had the ref distraction uh, finish. 
and Sammy Guevara picks up the victory. Like, I didn't like that. Like, had yeah, too many distractions, in my opinion, uh, last night. But Sammy Guevara gets the win there. Moving on, we had an interaction with the private party and Hangman Page. And Page was taking drinks from the private party. They didn't like any of that. And I gotta say that it was a strange interaction. Ah, I would obviously like to see what goes on from here on in. Like, I don't want to speculate, but uh, we'll, we'll see what happens with Hangman Page. We'll see what happens with the private party uh, going forward. I'll like to see what happens. But moving on from that, we had the MJF promo. And this guy is just tremendous. Uh, he did it, cut a great promo on Cody, Cody Rhodes on the city of Jacksonville. Did, did a great heel job there, but he wanted some stipulations before he would step into the ring with Cody. First, he said that Cody couldn't touch him like a kid. Said that Cody couldn't touch him. He also said that Cody had to face Wardlow in a steel cage. I'm actually looking forward to that match. That should be a very interesting matchup. I'm excited. And the strangest stipulation of them all. He said that he would whip Cody 10 times. Cody had to agree to that stipulation. Now, I was with MJF's promo all the way until he said that. I'm going to whip him 10 times. And I'm like, like, nah, I ain't feeling that one. Just nah, 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 I, yeah, no. That's about the only thing about MJF's promo that I wasn't with. But overall, MJF versus Cody, I'm very much looking forward to it. They're going to get to it. Uh, it's been a good build, and I'm looking forward to the match. So, toward the end of the night, the main event, we had the six-way tag. Ah, uh, the Elite versus the Lucha Brothers and Pac. This was a phenomenal match, man. I won't go for the spot by spot talking about each spot because there were a lot of them. This was a fast-paced match, and... One of the better main events, probably the best. It's it's bordering in the competition for the best AEW main event, AEW Dynamite main event, excuse me, uh, since they've been on TNT. And just a phenomenal match. We had the build go further with uh, Pac and Kenny Omega. We had some phenomenal things with the Lucha Brothers. Phoenix is just a magician, man. Just tremendously done. At the end of the day, uh, the Elite picks up the victory. And we had a pretty interesting post-match moment. Cody Rhodes comes down. And they're asking Hangman Page to get in the ring. And Hangman Page is just sitting at the commentary table with his drink like, nah, I'm good. So I'm very much enjoying. Like, at first, I did not want them to turn hangman page hill because he's the crowd absolutely loves that guy and i'm like man why turn that guy hill and you know it could be argued that the crowd is gonna love him no matter what you turn yeah, like in these days you turn a guy hill the crowd starts to chant him in and love him even more so we'll see from that aspect but i'm loving the slow bo slow burn that they are taking toward this adam ah uh, page heel turn so it is very interesting we'll see where they take off from after this and that was a tremendous tremendous episode of dynamite because the pace was just a great man there was no there was never a point in the show to where you were thinking okay this was a down moment in the show tremendous show i absolutely loved it and i absolutely loved this podcast episode because that is it for this episode of the two so hey wrestling podcast let me know all of your thoughts on twitter at the number two sweet pod that's at two sweet pod and at omg Corey b